Hey guys, how's it going? It's Frankie T here coming at you with another Marvel United X-Men video. Today we're going to be painting Jean Grey from the core box. We're going to start off with some McCraig blue and you're going to put that all over the blue parts on her chest, her shoulder, and around her uh, face. If you wanted to, you can do this part second instead of first. For some reason, I just grabbed the blue and started going on it first. Uh, I think it would have been better to put it second. It would have made uh, less of a mess. All right, after that, I grabbed some Zandri dust from Citadel, and I start putting that all over the yellow places. And I really like using Zandri dust first uh, uh, for my yellows, just because it's a uh, it really makes the yellows easier to paint and I only have one yellow and so I like to combine that with the Xandri dust. Rhinox hide is the next step. You just put that all over the hair, just put it everywhere. You're gonna say, oh, but she's a redhead. Well, guess what? Redheads uh, have brown in their hair somewhere, all right? Bugman's glow is the next step is for the face. Just put that all over her face. Try not to get on any of the blue or any of the hair or anywhere else on her for that matter. You can also do her hands this color. <clears throat> As you can see here, I have them. After that, I use Deep Purple from AK Interactive and I start putting that all over the little cloud here on the bottom. Like, I guess it's like her telekinetic cloud. And yeah, just put that all over the place. After that, I get a mixture of Mornfang Brown and fist and red and i kind of use those two for the eyeball socket and the eyeball here but just put it all over the place get it around the socket don't just cover the eyeball get down around just so you can uh, have a nice nice uh, colors for the for the eyeball here after that i did troll blood highlight and i put that just on the eyeball not everywhere on the edge of the socket just the eyeball You'll see after here that I just kind of put it all over the all over the center and then in the next image coming up You're going to see that I, I still have some of that other brown mixture left from before After that I grab golden olive from AK interactive and I put that just in the center just to add because he has uh, green eyes on the on the uh, cards I saw and yeah, you just want that there. Leave some of the troll blood highlight or whichever color you use for the eyeballs. Just make sure you leave that there. If you ever make a mistake, just go back over. Here, and you're gonna take any black you have. I used to use black from AK Interactive, or maybe you have a bat in black. Just put that right in the center or even closer to the top if you wanted. You could do like a half circle if you did it all the way at the top. But yeah, either a half circle or full circle could be, would be fine here. As long as it's um, in the center, it looks great. After that, just get a white, dip it in, put it on the palette, and then dip your brush in it. You don't need to thin it down. And just lightly press it up into the corner, the top left corner. Don't do what I did with her left eye. And put a big smudge, big, big dollop of it in the center. If you do, just remember, you can always go back and fix it, which is what I do. And you'll see in the next image here that I do end up fixing the eyeball and that the reflection looks much nicer. As you can see here, it looks pretty good, I think. Just now we're going to do some washes. I did a flesh wash on her face, uh, sear from sepia for her, uh, for the yellow areas. I did a purple tone for the... Uh, purple down below and a dark tone for her uh, all the blue areas after that I took a rhinox hide and the fist and red mixture and put it all over the hair and when it's still wet you can even put some rhinox hide back inside the creases to make sure that the brown color and dark air dark color is still showing there and this way you have a nice mixture of the two colors and the transitions look real nice and smooth. You can do just pure Mephist and Red afterwards while it's still wet and just do nice, uh, nice uh, wet blends and it ends up looking real good. You, you'll get nice colors. Just play around with it. Have fun with it. Don't worry about it and you'll be good to go. After that, you can use just pure Mephist and Red and do the exact same thing. 
as soon as you feel like you've gone too far, just get some of that other co uh, mixture you had before and just mix that right back in. You don't need to worry about anything. This is my favorite part is painting these, uh, anything with transition like that. So like capes, uh, hair, I always find they're so fun to paint. Uh, just because you can get a play around with the colors and just mix them together like you're doing like you're a little kid on a piece of paper after that I take some evil sun scarlet and I keep it near the tops near the um, edges and try to keep it nice and bright and you can take that and do streaks of lines on the hair uh, you can cover whole areas with it and then take an old the other colors and do the exact same thing as before and do wet blends with it just have fun have a good time with the hair I'm telling you hair and stuff and cloaks and capes are gonna be such a joy to paint and just uh, do some edge highlighting with it as well and make sure you do those highlight lines like as you can see there's some lines there that I, I have and then uh, what I'm doing here is I'm taking squig orange and doing some pure edge highlighting and then I do, uh, it's hard to see here because I don't stay in the camera yet. I'm still uh, getting better at it. But I do some uh, highlight lines with this squig orange in the center of the hair pieces, like the big chunks. That way you can get some, uh, it looks much more natural, uh, like uh, people who have highlights in their hair. You'll see what I mean and I think the next shot we have a good uh, up above of you here. Like right there, you can see on that big fat area, you can see how there's those different uh, highlight lines coming through. And yeah, real nice. All right, so here's what I was saying with my yellow combination. I mix Xandri Dust and Flash Gets Yellow as my first layer. And I mix that all over, stay out of the crevices and put that as over all over this, um, every spot that's gonna be yellow and just to brighten it up. And then right after I do Xandri Dust, I go to a Shanty Bone and I do the exact same thing, just keep it um, keep the color coming up and up and up and then after a shanty bone I use screaming skull on the top areas wherever I think there's gonna be light shining so the top of her knees uh, let me see forearm area and feet just to give uh, and her chest just to make nice and bright after that you could take some McCraig blue and go over all the blue areas um, but I just went for McCraig blue and rust gray. I kind of just forgot and I just went over all that all the blue areas with this It, it turns out alright, but I think you get a better uh, It would be better if you did McCraig blue first and then went to a combination of McCraig blue and rust gray <clears throat> After that I used Fenrishian gray and I just went all over the for the most part, I went all over the blue areas again with the Fenrishian Gray and McCraig Blue. And this was like my the brightest spot. So I didn't go all the way in. I just did some uh, like edge highlighting and some uh, spot highlighting with it. After that, I went Bugman's Glow back over the face, trying to stay out of all the recesses or crevices around like her nose, her eyes, her lips. And this way I just put it all over the uh, brow, the top of her nose, her chin, her jawline, her cheekbones. And then after you get that pretty much everywhere except for the recesses, you're going to do the same thing with caddy and flesh tone. But this time leave some of the uh, color, some, some of the Bugman's Glow from before. And just so it's, it has better transitions for the two. And then after that, finally, just take some kids left flesh, go on the top of her, her nose, the edge of her jawline, uh, the top of her cheekbones, the top of her brow as well. And uh, you try not to try to thin this one down a bit more, and then you can have a, a nice smoother face. Also, I took some Mephiston Red and put it on her lips just to give her some uh, lipstick there. After that, for eyebrows, I like to do Mephiston Red and uh, Rhinox Hide just to, because eyebrows tend to be a bit darker and just slowly, nice light brush strokes and uh, just draw out the eyebrows there. For her eyeliner, I just took some black, uh, thinned it down like normal, but I took out some of the uh, the liquid from my brush on, off, on a paper towel 
and I get right up close to it and gently, ever so gently, just brush it along the edge there and then do like a little curve upwards just to follow the uh, the um, the makeup line there. And then on the other side, you'll see, uh, it's gonna be a bit blurry here, but you'll see here, the brush is not thin, like it's not a very small brush. It's probably a number two or number three artist opus brush and I just let that slide right across there and you see as long as the tip of the brush is, is good you're good to go and you can do nice fine lines. After that I just dry brush some deep purple over top of the uh, little smoke here. Just go all over the place. Like I said before, I did a wash of a purple tone or a juicy violet you could use. And then after that, I took Warlord Purple and dry brushed that all over the place as well. And then after that, I took Carnal Pink from Privateer Press and I did that on the edges as well. I just was kind of sloppy with the whole thing. I just let the, let the uh, clouds do the highlighting for me. I didn't really worry at all. It's just nice and simple, it doesn't need to be super pretty, it just needs to look uh, reasonably good. After that I just took Rhinox Hide again and went along the base. You could have done this earlier if you wanted to, but you'd have to clean up the purple that you got on it from dry brushing, so I didn't bother and I just did it now. Um, but yeah, go all over the place, go on the edges too you could do now if you wanted, but I just wait until the very ending to do the edges of the... Uh, base. After that I did cold gray on there. There's like these little rocks all over the place just to give the base a little bit more um, interesting look to it. I just covered all those um, with cold gray and then went over it all with a dark tone. I don't even think I did a dry brush after. I think I just kept it super simple and left it as is. When I'm about to finish here I realized I didn't do the little gem thing on her forehead. And so I took Grey Knight Steel from Citadel and I just colored that in on the center here. You could use like a shining silver or something to highlight it, but really I just left it as is because I thought it looks good enough. And that's it, Jean Grey's done from the Marvel United X-Men Core Box. I'm really happy with the way she looks. Um, the hair turned out great, her face looks alright. Uh, looks like she might have a cold sore on there, I messed up on her lips, but it's okay, it's all good. Next, I think I'm going to be painting Storm, and that one will be, I'm sure, a bit chal more challenging because of the white, oh, it's pure white, uh, whitish gray costume, and, but I'm sure it's going to turn up fun and be uh, very good. But here's hoping it's all right. See you in the next one, guys.